This is the beginning of the last mile. So that meeting suddenly had sparks. It had a vision. It had uh, quite a bit of fun, actually. And as you said, a lot of people were behind him listening to a very long speech, two and a bit hours, to, for him to be able to present his vision of France and also to differentiate himself from the three potential challenges that are both on the extreme left and two on the extreme right. Obviously, he's an incumbent. He's not the newcomer that he was five years ago. As he said, we have changed in five years. We've been in, in power. We've been you know, hurt by the crisis that we've had to manage. But the spirit's still the same. He wants to do best, whether it's coming from the right or from the left. He wants to fight the extreme, and he wants to push France forward. He talked about picking up his reform agenda that we know he started in the first half of his first mandate before the pandemic hit. But he was insisting a lot on the change of methods because we know that when he pushed through those, reform, those reforms, it was, he was quite unpopular. Um, what change of method? What does that mean? We, we don't have this Jupiter president anymore. So what's the, what would be the 2022 Macron then? Well, we're hopefully slowly getting out of a pandemic. There's war at the doorsteps of, of Europe. So in those crisis time, I think the main objective of any president should be to reassemble, to unite French people together behind a reform agenda, because we know that France needs to keep on changing to address the challenges of the 21st century, which are the environmental transition, the social agenda, the fears that people have vis-à-vis -vis globalization, the pandemics, and so on and so forth. So we need to keep on changing France, but doing it in a more united way so that everyone is behind him, everyone, no one's left on the side in a way, because we know, we've seen it in Brexit, we've seen it in the US, we've seen it in Hungary yesterday. We need the extremes to be pushed away, and for that we need to unite people together towards a central reform agenda, and that's what he's doing. He mentioned in his speech at the Louvre just after his election that um, he would do everything he could in the next five years of his mandate to uh, make the people that voted for his opponent, Marine Le Pen, to not vote for the extremes anymore. It looks like that has failed. Uh, Marine Le Pen is still very much his top contender. Uh, looks like it could be very, very tight between them in the second round if this to go through the first round. Uh, what has failed there in trying to unite, I guess, and make people not want to vote for the extremes? Because all the top three candidates after Emmanuel Macron are all for the, from the far right or the far left. Yeah, well, the, the fight hasn't been won or lost yet. So I think the next week is going to be very important in order to convince people that they have to vote. Donald Trump was elected with a historical low turnout, and he was defeated on a historically high turnout. I think that for the extremes to recede, we need people to go and vote, go and vote, go and vote. That being said, you're right. We haven't succeeded yet into making angry people less angry, reassuring them on the fact that the way forward is a moderate way, is a central way, and it's not an angry way. It's hard. It's hard everywhere. We've seen it at the doorsteps of Europe, again, in Ukraine, where Russia is attacking. Liberal democracy is in danger now. So we need to make sure to keep on convincing people that still the best way forward is liberal democracy. And in France, the best way forward, as you said, looking at the race, is suddenly to vote and to vote for Emmanuel Macron. Because this is the same with the EU. We know that it's very unashamedly pro-European, Emmanuel Macron. Uh, you had all these European flags at the rally this weekend. One of the few candidates has so many European flags uh, in the crowd. And again, a lot of voters, almost 40% of voters, are ready to vote for a Eurosceptic um, candidate. So has it been, again, a failure of trying to translate and explain the benefits of being part of the EU? Are we underestimating the Eurosceptic feeling in France? On the contrary. I think that fight has been won. Marine Le Pen now is not anti-European anymore, at least in her words. We know that in her actions she probably will be, but she used to be anti-European. Now she doesn't really talk about Europe anymore. Same for Mélenchon. He wanted to get out of Europe. He wanted a left-hand side Brexit, or Frexit, sorry. This is not happening again. The fight has been won. We need to keep on convincing people that the only way to have a strong France is to have a strong Europe and vice versa.